Okay, now listen, just imagine. Uh, imagine that you're leaving town for a while. Maybe you're a snowbird, you lock it up, and you go back wherever it is that you came from. And then you discover that when you come back to visit, that your entire house has been underwater the entire time. Yes, it can happen in the desert, if you have water pipes going into your house anyway. Let's talk about what to do about it with Adam Webster, CEO of Rocky Mountain Restoration. Snowbirds, wave goodbye. They lock up the house, Adam. What else should they do? All right, well, there's a few things they can do. Um, if they're trying to protect themselves from water damage, like you just said, um, a few things they can do that's real simple is one is, if they can, shut off the main water to the house, right? Um, they have a main water typically outside the front door somewhere. You can shut that off. And sometimes they might want to leave maybe the main water running to the house because they have some irrigation running. That's okay. You can still turn off the water um, at the washing machine, at the water heater, and some areas like that in the home to help prevent some of those areas from bursting because if those burst while you're gone, um, as you may know, you know, you're not there to take care of it and no one's there to catch it. That's when it causes a lot of damage. I'm here to tell you because it did happen. My wife and I were both gone and the water heater blew. Right. It was a disaster. Oh my goodness. But what else should we do if we're going to lock up for the season? If you're going to lock up for the season, um, well, another thing to look out for too is, is, you know, they're taking off, our snowbirds are taking off what, you know, March, April, not coming back till October typically. So they're missing the whole monsoon season. So during the monsoon season, there's obviously we have a lot of wind, a lot of storms that come through. So there's a few things, things, they, few things they can do to protect themselves from the monsoon. One thing is I'd recommend getting a roof inspection, you know, every several oh. years, you know, because if there is a, an issue with the roof, they can catch that before there's a leak, before there's property damage inside, you know, the water will drip through and cause damage inside the home. Uh, other thing they can do too is make sure that their trees are trimmed. You know, people don't think about that, but if a big gust of wind comes through, um, that tree is going to break and uh, could, if it, especially if it overhangs a part of the property or an awning or something like that, or power lines. I know, would things never like have that. thought of it. Yeah. What about the air conditioning? What do I do if I'm going to be gone for a few months? You know, and the few months are summer. Right. So if you're going to be gone, I mean, there's a few different recommendations out there. You know, obviously some people like to just turn it off altogether, but also you might just turn it up to set it at a higher temperature. So that way it's not cooling the house. You obviously don't need your house at, you know, 78 degrees while you're not there. So you can turn it up maybe to the mid 80s or low 90s, maybe to help keep that bill down. Or, you know, a lot of people just turn it off altogether if that's what they want to do. Security. Uh-huh. What do we do about that? Security, right? So that's another big concern. Um, um, even if you live in a park and there's people nearby, you know, but there's still that chance that someone could break in, right? So one recommendation I can give there is for people to, uh, you know, get their lights on a timer or something, their exterior lights, right? Set it on a timer, they kick on every night at 6 or 7 o'clock, and it gives that appearance at somebody's home, right? Uh, and that's one thing they can do. The other thing I can recommend is that if they have someone that's there year-round in the park or nearby uh, the house, is they can have them uh, come in and check on it, right, periodically, like a caretaker or a friend in the area that has a key to the house. They can come in and check on things, kind of make sure things okay over there. But why um, would I call Rocky Mountain Restoration? Now, if you call the Rocky Mountain Restoration, you're probably experiencing a water damage issue or a fire damage issue, something like a disaster that's kind of hit the inside of your home, right? Like you, ex like you expressed, you know, you have a water damage, pipe breaks, a uh, water heater goes out, whatever it may be, right? Now you've got a bunch of water inside the home. That's where our company, our com you know, restoration companies would come in to uh, extract that water, clean it up, and make any necessary repairs to the property, you know. Um, and so the, the best advice I can give you too is if you do have some form, form of water damage is to take care of it as fast as possible. The longer you wait, the worse it gets. Well, that standing water really can do mm -hmm. some major damage and it can also bring in some not so welcome visitors. <laughs> when you're right. talking about some of the some of the bugs, some of the microbes, some of the bacteria. Yeah, exactly. So that's a big concern we have, and that's why insurance companies, you know, like to send out restoration companies like um, like Rocky Mountain right away to make sure it gets mitigated or cleaned up properly. So that way, there's not going to be any mold or any bacteria growth in those areas, which is which can be a result from that stagnant water just sitting in the home. Okay, so you had the key in the lock in the door and you didn't do any of those things yet, there's still time. And if you've forgotten what they are, call Rocky Mountain Restoration. Back in a moment.